Hello, everyone. Welcome to our third session of our TL specialist series about Mongolia. You are now this close to earning your specialist badge. As you know, by completing all four sessions, not only you get the badge to show your clients that you are specialists in the region, but you also uh, will get a 15% commission on all bookings made this year for travel next year. So this is a great time to learn about the destination so you can promote on your distribution channels. We are now more than halfway through. So we have today and next week will be our last uh, session. Just as a recap, the first session, we did an introduction to Mongolia where we learn about the wild heritage and the landscapes. On uh, the second session last week, we did the festivals, the nomadic team uh, highlighted five festivals. So that was a lot of content. Uh, it might be helpful to go back and see that recording again. I did and I thought it was really good to see it a second time. Um, today, we are going to be talking about the nomadic culture and arts of Mongolia. So it's a very exciting topic before last session next week about the um, Three Camel Lodge, which it's a no miss session. Uh, today, leading this amazing journey will be the nomadic leading team on the call. We have Sanjay, who is the oh. director of operations for Nomadic Expeditions. We have also Undra on the call. She is the president for Nomadic Expeditions and the Three Camel Lodge. And we have Nikita, who is their expedition manager. And of course, we also have the TL team here to support you. Uh, so if you have any questions, please let us know. The chat, uh, is available for questions. So if you have any throughout the session, please make sure to write down in the session and uh, we all gonna be answering and helping you out. So I think today our journey will start with Sanjay. Uh, so Sanjay, here is the center, the center stage. Uh, we look forward to learning from you today. Okay, so Mongolia, you know, has a very, very rich uh, tradition, especially of uh, Buddhist art. Uh, Buddhism came into uh, Mongolia, you know, in the 13, 1400s. And since then, uh, that, that has been the primary religion. And like a lot of other uh, Buddhist countries, Buddhist art has been you know, the cornerstone of uh, the artwork in uh, Mongolia. And, and this was primarily spearheaded by a very, very prolific artist by the name of Zana Bazar in the 1600s. And he was also uh, like the, the first major uh, abbot, I guess you could call him, uh, of Mongolia vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Buddhism is concerned. And it, it included everything from, you know, sculptures, uh, tapestries, arts, um, and continues on. So most of his work is actually now at the Fine Arts Museum, which bears his name. But the great thing about uh, the art is that this is really a tradition that has been carried through the centuries to the present day. So you don't have to just visit the Fine Arts Museum in order to see this kind of artwork. You can go to uh, a monastery, in this case, the Alagbutil Temple, which is relatively new. And as you come to the temple, you will see how the traditional art is still very, very much alive and flourishing in a great fashion. And that is something uh, very unique in this particular monastery. I'm actually gonna just take you back to one slide. Uh, just keep in mind on the hillside that you see behind the monastery. Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. 
Uh, of course, the interior has all the traditional artwork that, that goes with a monastic uh, temple. But in this particular case, we actually take you for a walk up in the hill and you will see how the monk, the, the resident monks here have taken the traditional art and taken it out into nature. And all the boulders and rocks that fill that hillside have been carved with you know, many different forms. So it's, it's literally like a living you know, sculpture garden in a way. And this particular site is just about an hour and a half drive from the capital. So it's very easy to visit. It's not in a very remote location, but this is just one, you know, small example of how the art, which was, you know, five, 600 years old or when it started is still, you know, very much uh, active and uh, flourishing. This is a very, very, you know, contemporary piece, though steeped in tradition and in the, you know, nomadic uh, way of uh, life or bringing the nomad culture into, you know, modern uh, society, this kind of shadow uh, painting. The traditional script in uh, Mongolia, their calligraphy, it actually is written vertically, starting on the top, and, and this is, a technique that is, it, has, it comprises about 90 letters and they are connected by continuous strokes. Uh, it is now actually by uh, UNESCO considered an intangible cultural heritage, uh, which is in, you know, as they say, different categories, urgent safeguarding. So from these uh, traditional ways of art, we're now going to move on to the performing arts, which uh, Undra is going to uh, share with you or tell you more about. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen now and take you to the performing arts of Mongolia. So when we, you know, all forms of art in Mongolia 
really intimately linked to back to nature. You know, when we talk about the origin of the art, in some ways, I feel like it always goes back to nature. That it's whether we're talking about, you know, musical compositions or songs, the roots are always going back to the sounds of the nature, whether it's the sound of the wind, the river, the, you know, the, the water. And that's very evident when you come to Mongolia that the nature and art is so intimately connected to each other. And also a lot of our performing arts also originate or inspired by nomadic way of life, how nomads live their day-to-day lives, what they do every day in terms of herding and milking the animals and, you know, making food and cheese and so on. But then also that connection between how harmonious the way of life is with the nature is was truly that combination inspires the art, especially performing arts in Mongolia. I want to start with a very unique kind of category of performing arts or something called long song. So long song is, you know, originated approximately, I mean, estimates about more than 2000 years ago. And the singers who are able to perform long song have an extraordinary voice of long ranges. And some of the notes that they, you know, sing it for so long and it's associated with how, you know, vast and open is the land in Mongolia. So I wanted to play... Um, little sound you know what that long song sounds like and do short clip by one of the probably the most famous mongolian uh, long song singer So hopefully that gives you an idea uh, about, you know, what the long song and why the sounds, the tones are so, um, why it's called long song. It's it was actually also um, registered by UNESCO is um, in the list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2008. And also what's very evident how much the nomadic way of life has influenced the art is that through traditional dance. So and this is a picture taken at our Sri Kama Lodge, but you can see that actually a lot of when you're looking at the dance movements and, and different kind of positions they take and movements they imitate, a lot of it is connected to, you know, nomadic way of life, whether it could be maybe like riding a horse, or like milking an animal and such through artistic kind of dance movement. So actually, I wanted to also kind of talk about this very special uh, kids and musical school that exists in Hanghongor village in the South Gobi, which is close to our Three Kama Lodge. So these are very talented. These are the same, actually. This is the same students also. So they perform for our guests. And we have been working with this local herd of children since 2008. Uh, so we have seen several of these graduating classes. You know, they study traditional uh, music instruments, traditional dance, song, and that's one of our actual kind of signature projects at the Three Camel Lodge, uh, working with these uh, students, also supporting them through different initiatives. In 2018, we sent them to international musical actually festival that occurred in Ankara, Turkey, where they actually was their first time kind of overseas trip to go and perform overseas and share their art with other children, students from around the world uh, who studying traditional performance performing arts. And we also have a scholarship program for some of these students will go on, graduate their high school, but pursue a career in on a college level or higher educational level to become artists. So we do support that. And we have a, also a special scholarship program for these kids. The contortion is also a very ancient form of art that's unique to Mongolia. It's really through training, it's illustrating the extreme flexibility and strength of the human body. 
and some of the again the the way the positions or the way the folding of the body and such it's also connected to the traditional kind of art uh, expressions of Mongolia. And interestingly, you know, many of you have seen probably uh, Cirque du Soleil shows. Most of the, probably over 90% of the performers who does the contortion during the Cirque du Soleil shows, including, oh, and, and many others, actually Mongolian women and girls who is trained in this art and, and perform it really around the world through similar to performances like Cirque du Soleil. So throat sending is actually also a very unique art form of art to Mongolia. And it's people, when they hear it first time, they always amazed how a person can at the same time be able to create several sounds, you know, but the, most of the throat sending is really about for the performer to be able to produce through his uh, throat two really sounds. It's the high notes and then low notes in being able to the mixture of these two kind of pitches creates that incredible sound that's, you know, you can't mistake for anything else. So I wanted to kind of share with you this kind of fun video about, I think it was the voice in Australia and where this performer was actually is illustrating and showing um, what the throat singing sounds like. So, I mean, throat singing is amazing. And actually now you see, you know, modern kind of expression of it where, you know, if you look up a band called Who, so the, there's kind of the metallic, the music combined with throat singing become quite popular in the last few years. So they've been touring, but there is, you know, many different interpretations and actually types of the throat singing. And it's really fascinating. And the sound is just mistaken so that brings us i mean you, if you notice the guy he was playing instrument in that kind of the voice edition and it is a very interesting in, uh, instrument called murinhur uh, or horse-headed horse-head fiddle um, in, in english so you see on this picture actually all this uh, we have in mongolia a national horse-head fiddle ensemble uh, which consists of 35 musicians roughly and the majority of them actually do play the same instrument the horse head fiddle so the legend i mean you know there's many different versions of the legend of the origin of the this particular instrument but one of the most commonly known is about this herdsman who 
his name was Suhe and he had, um, you know, a beautiful, beautiful kind of white horse and had a very special relationship kind of with that horse. And uh, one of the horse racing competitions, another kind of lord was upset with the horse and essentially they killed the guy, the herdsman's um, uh, horse and the horse was wounded and then the horse came to its owner, who was a horseman. Uh, since the horse died, the nomad or the horseman was, you know, really heartbroken and was missing horse, his horse tremendously. And one day in his dream, the horse came and whispered, you know, uh, whispered that you can make a musical instrument out of my body. So what happened is that the herdsman next day, the he woke up from, from his room and created this particular instrument using his beloved horse's hair, body, and skin. So that's one of the legends in how this particular instrument was born. This instrument has a very special place in Mongolian culture. I mean, most you will notice that, you know, most of the families will have this. is a very special instrument in their homes. And the ensemble was uh, celebrating its 25th anniversary in 2017. And in 2017, also, we celebrated 15th anniversary of the Three Camel Lodge. Drossler, who is now a founder and CEO, he sits on the board of the Arts Council of Mongolia. So we have done a special event in 2017 to bring all these musicians to the Gobi for special filming so they can keep the, you know, images from this trip as well as the videos uh, that were done for the kind of promotion uh, needs. So I'm going to play what uh, one of the most well-known or famous kind of Mongolian compositions by a composer named Shadov.
Okay, so actually the music, I mean, if you probably could imagine, you know, the, it kind of takes you to an image where you see this vast open kind of landscape of the steppe of Mongolia and the horses are coming, like horses are galloping at full speed. This, for those of you who would like to kind of learn more, please, of course, contact TL Portfolio, please contact Nomad Expeditions. Here you see some of the resources, you know, when you can Google or YouTube search the videos and recordings some of these performing arts performances will be able to watch i'm gonna i think that's my presentation but it, there is an incredible rich cultural heritage in our into the art i mean we, we haven't even touched about what's happening with the modern art in the city but you know i'd love to kind of encourage you to speak to your clients who are interested in art or who perform art, you know, and reach out to us and we'll be happy to really put together a wonderful program that really focused on art and exploring that side of Mongolia, which is, I think, not a lot of people are aware of when they think about travel to Mongolia. I have to say, this was amazing. I don't even know where to start. I feel like I, I was just in the Mongolian concert you know, that covered all kinds of different things. It was, it's just incredible. And I mean, Mongolia got to be one of the most authentic places to visit on earth. And the whole thing that you said that, you know, everything goes back to nature, to the sounds of water and um, the wind. It's just, it's just so fascinating. It's so fascinating. It was just so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. We had some great comments and questions on the chat too. Uh, so I'm pretty sure everybody enjoyed the presentation very much. We have a, a, a last session next week. So I'd like to ask all the agents on this presentation to think about things that, you know, maybe we didn't cover, questions that you might have. Uh, this week would be the time to send us, you know, any requests or questions or, you know, if you want to know about something in specific, we can always cover that a little bit next week during the last session. Do you have any final thoughts, any final uh, Thanks for and I think and there's so much to cover, right? So that's why I think in last session we would like to cover any kind of aspects or you know important parts of travel planning or the destination knowledge that you would like to hear from us. So even though our main focus is going to be Sri Campbell Lodge and the Gobi Desert and what it has to offer. But we also want to set aside the time for other, you know, topics and subjects that everybody's interested in, in learning more. So please send us your questions, please send us your suggestions, and we'll do our best to make sure that we give you well-rounded kind of uh, content on Mongolia, you, so you feel that you really know the destination uh, at the end of these four webinars. And Umber, before letting everybody go, I, I have to say, I'm very impressed by how much nomadic expeditions in the Three Camel Lodge is involved in keeping all those traditions alive. You know, you have the scholarships, I mean, you help in so many ways, and it's just so nice to hear, you know, that you were so involved. It's really special. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's a part of we have done since the beginning. So really didn't think it was something additional we're doing, but um, thank you. Welcome. Well, everybody, we hope to see you all next week for our last and final session. Please send us your questions and we will be sending you the recording for this week along the links for images and the presentation. So hope to see you all next week. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye.